Congresswoman Lori Trahan is our guest this morning. Let's go on the record. A witness to war, how our mission to the Ukraine border is shaping her policy on Russia, the heavy cost, the uncertain future. The Congresswoman is here this morning. Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. And welcome to OGR This Morning. I'm Ed Harding, along with News Center 5's political reporter Janet Woods. Great to have you with us this morning. And we are pleased to have Congresswoman Lori Trahan with us this morning in the chair. She's a Democrat. She's representing the state's third district. She is also a candidate for re-election. She's a resident of Westford and a graduate of Georgetown University. It's always great to see you. Thanks for your time. We great appreciate you coming. You. Thank you for having me. So uh, you recently returned from the Ukrainian border with your okay. colleagues. We are now seeing even more atrocities mm -hmm. um, in television uh, video that we are getting back here in the United States. They are war crimes being committed by Russian soldiers. Is it worse than you anticipated before you went over there? Well, today, yes, absolutely. I mean, it's even worse than uh, it was when I was there two weeks ago. Uh, I think the reason we went, it was a bipartisan delegation. Uh, we went to Poland, Romania, and Moldova. Big part of that was to see the humanitarian and the refugee crises that are playing out at the border. Um, but it was also to send a strong message to our allies that the United States is standing with, uh, with them. Uh, we don't know how far Vladimir Putin is going to go uh, with this unprovoked aggression and invasion of, of Ukraine. And so it's really important that we send a strong message to our allies that we will be there for them. I also had the opportunity to uh, visit our servicemen and women in uniform, uh, both in Poland, our 82nd Airborne, as well as at the MK Air Force Base in Romania, where our allied uh, um, nations also are sending troops. And so that is... Uh, it's a, it's a moment right now mm -hmm. in, in history. I don't think it's lost on anyone, but certainly this past week, seeing the images coming out of Bucha, is, it's, these are atrocities, these are crimes against humanity. Uh, and I think it's important that we just took a vote uh, this past week, ensuring that the United States does everything that we can to collect and share the evidence that is being amassed so that we can um, establish war, cr war crimes and those trials, not just against Putin, but against his, um, you know, his generals and his commanders who are on the ground. The, the, the Ukraine President Zelensky is not happy with UN Security Council, NATO, and most of the West. He wants a lot more support in terms of weapons, in terms of ammunition, in, in light of the atrocities that are being revealed. You were just, you were just talking about Buka, for example. So the, 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 the question always is, and still sits today, what, what more should America do? So I think we have stepped up our response every single step of the way. Uh, you know, but the administration and the president really deserve a lot of credit <laughs> Uh, on is holding together our allies. Um, this is a coalition um, that's never been stronger, uh, certainly. I mean, Vladimir Putin has managed to unite the world, not just mm -hmm. uh, the EU and NATO, uh, but also Democrats and Republicans in Congress. I mean, I traveled with three other Republicans uh, on Congressman Lynch's uh, delegation, and there was no daylight in between what we were saying, uh, both to our allies and also uh, to Vladimir Putin on this unprovoked uh, invasion. And so I do think that we have to continue to step up. We've taken a lot of steps, uh, not just with lethal aid, but also with humanitarian mm -hmm. assistance. Uh, the Are sanctions, we doing as much as we possibly can at this point, though, do you think? Or yeah. do you think there's still room for us to be of, there uh, is always going to be room for us weapons, to do more, more. ammunition. <clears throat> should, should we work to, to close off the airspace? So that is a that is a great question, and it's one that we're you know always uh, sort of having to deal with responding to. Um, I think the one thing that people need to understand is you know a no-fly zone uh, means that we are sending our servicemen and women to war um, because that's exactly what happens the second we have to shoot down a Russian airplane. Um, and so that will prompt, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that, and that will also bring NATO with us, uh, which is not our decision alone to make. And so every time we escalate our aid uh, and our support to Ukraine, we really do have to do that in concert with our allies. And the president has done an unbelievable job. I mean, just what the EU is doing this week with energy sanctions uh, to meet what we've done here in the United States, those are important steps. And those sanctions are working. I mean, the, the Russian economy has has been crippled. Uh, the ruble uh, is worthless at this at this point. And so they survive on an energy economy and uh, and really making sure that we're pressing Should our we allies. Should we stop buying Russian oil altogether? 
Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, we have a ban today on oil um, and, and gas and other energy products. Uh, but, you know, we don't buy as much mm -hmm. as what, our European That was my right. question. Should Europe, right. should the European yeah. countries right. that do get most of their oil and gas from Russia just boycott it completely and just deal with the consequences to their economy and to the cost to their consumers. Yes, certainly they're taking, they've taken steps uh, just this past week uh, to do that um, with the, the EU sanctions on energy uh, products from, um, from, from Russia. But we're constantly going to be pressuring them to do more. That is, those are the sanctions that are, that are working. There's a lot that we can do in terms of the United States helping to supply energy uh, to Europe. One of the reasons why that we had the uh, oil and gas executives before the energy and commerce this week was to get at the heart of why they aren't increasing supply. One, to help uh, um, hardworking American families have relief at the pump and in their home heating bills, but also so that we can be a good trade partner uh, to our allies in Europe who are really having to make uh, tough decisions on, on sanctioning Russian you, you, you talked about these pressures coming from other areas around, around uh, Russia and around Putin. The United States imposed more sanctions on Russian oligarchs this week, so should. And are members of Congress combing through their donations to return money from oligarchs or those with any strong ties to them? In other words, just filtering through and saying, nope, that's out, that's done. <clears throat> Absolutely. I mean, look, I think it was uh, it was so inspiring to just see everyday Americans, you know, throwing out Russian made vodka or, lux you know, luxury items from the country. Small businesses doing the same. We have to expect more, uh, not just from individuals mm -hmm. like members of Congress to return those donations, uh, but also from our, you know, our U.S. companies. Right. We should. I mean. Being a, a, a business in the United States, um, you know, it means something. Uh, it means something in times when we're under threat, foreign threat. Uh, and we've seen that throughout our history with World War II, uh, certainly 9-11 most recently. And we do expect everybody to uh, reflect the same patriotism that we're seeing out of, uh, you know, hardworking working. What do you America? think of companies like Gillette, Procter & Gamble that owns Gillette? that are still doing business in Russia. They've pulled back a little bit. They're not manufacturing. They're not doing new deals, but they are still selling razors. Do you, what do you, what's your opinion of that? Are they doing the right thing? Uh, look, I think that uh, I think we should be um, issuing the harshest treatment possible against Russia. I think American companies should stop doing business. It was my message to oil and gas companies uh, uh, this past week, um, but certainly uh, to every company. And we heard the same. I mean, when we sit with Ukrainian civilians, they are saying not just put pressure on European allies so that we're issuing the toughest sanctions possible and giving them the lethal aid that they need to defend their freedom and defend democracy worldwide wide, but also on American companies to stop doing business with a war criminal. Um, we were talking before we started uh, the show about you seeing waves and waves of Ukrainian yeah. refugees leaving Ukraine and going into <clears throat> Poland, going to uh, the nearby countries. Thousands of Ukrainian refugees have made it to the U.S.-Mexican yeah. border in the last week or so. And they're hoping to enter our country. They join tens of thousands of Central Americans also who have been trying for months, if not years, to mm -hmm. get across the border. Should we give priority to the Ukrainians? So, one, when I was over uh, in Poland, Romania, and Moldova, I did. I got to see um, uh, exactly what we've seen play out on TV, except in person, which is really hard. It's always hard to see families separated uh, against their will, right? Brothers and fathers turning, you know, dropping their families off at the border and then turning around to go fight. And so the uncertainty and the anxiety and just the... <clears throat> The, uh, the, the trauma that goes along with that is uh, something we got to see up close. Uh, really proud that the, the United States is, uh, is accepting 100,000 um, Ukrainian but refugees. But Ukrainian refugees get priority on the southern border over those who have been trying to get in for quite a while? Look, we have acceptance criteria at our border. Um, folks who have valid uh, claims of asylum or re refuge seeking um, status should be able to come into our country. That's how it's been throughout our history. And right now, Ukrainian, U Ukrainians, I mean, it's, it's interesting because I've often get, get asked the question is whether 100,000 enough. 
when I talk to Ukrainians in, uh, in Eastern Europe, they don't want to go too far from home. Right. They want to go back home. Uh, that's why there's three million right. refugees in Poland. Uh, and that's why there's six million people are, you know, in and around the border right. dispra displaced just in Ukraine alone. They don't want to leave their home. They want to fight and they want to uh, return Ukraine back to the peaceful democracy that it was. So I do think the United States is going to step up if we need to increase that number. Uh, and I do think that Ukrainians right now, but people just want to be as helpful as they can. They are fleeing a war zone. Uh, and so them having a safe haven in the United States is really important. Congresswoman Laura Johannes with us this morning.